G'day everyone, I'm Ben and this is Counterfeit Christianity. I am feeling pretty happy today. I'm glad to be here. And like always, I really want to thank you guys for watching and liking. Make sure you hit the likes if you like it. It really helps me. And comment. Thanks for watching. I've been thinking about joy again today. And I have been asking God to prompt me every single day about what he wants me to talk about and make a video about. As I'm trying to make more content, make more videos, so far God has been giving me lots to talk about, popping into my mind. And so today... I felt like he wants me to talk about joy again. I've talked about joy in the past. I had some new thoughts about it today and I thought I might share it with you guys. In my last video about joy, I talked about a man who is not on the way to joy or on the journey for joy can't really be with God. A man who's not intentionally striving, intentionally looking to be joyful and on that journey of joy, you can't be with God. And I saw a comment in there, I can't remember who, but said that they feel like peace is what we need more than joy. And that made me start thinking, and I was wondering about that. And I think that joy and peace are pretty closely connected. They're very similar, but they're not the same thing. And I agree that they are both extremely important. And then I was thinking about attuning and attunement deficit disorder. The correct way of defining ADD is attunement deficit disorder. And I believe that that comes from not being attuned with, not having a heart to heart connection when you're growing up, or having a safe place to be yourself without having to be different, without having to be or change or say something specific to receive love. That is what joy basically is. Glad to be with each other no matter what. That is the definition of joy that I like the most. And I was thinking about the journey of my family. I've talked to my mum about this already, so I know that she won't mind if I talk about it. And I've talked about it with my sister as well. And I think we're all starting to slowly understand what has happened. And I will share a little bit about that today. And I think what happened in our life, because I, I was talking to my mom this morning and I asked her, when I was born, did you have peace? I, I think now because a mother needs to have peace to be able to pass on joy and safety to her children. And, and she told me that, yeah, she did have peace when I was born. And at that stage, she was beginning to get connected with God and God connected it to her relationally straight away as he does with all of us but very quickly it was tainted with christianity because at that time she hadn't been to church and she was already in a relational conversational communication with god our daddy and that was great and she's explained to me what that was like and then and my dad was a truck driver so he was away most of the week and so she already had that this relational connection with god and then after that she got connected with a christian church in tamworth it was called st stephen's and I, that was one of the first memories I have of a church building. They had the altar, it was a big, it's a massive big concrete building. I think it was probably built in the 70s. It looked like a, a morgue or something, it's still there. I don't know what you would call it. Something to do with the death. It's, it's like, it looks death, death-like to me. No joy, no peace. A huge hulking concrete structure on top of a hill. It looks like it's, it's waiting up there to devour all the happiness and joy out of the community. And that's really what it has done in our family, that's for sure. It was beginning of the downfall and the struggles that we had in our family. Because after that, this idea of things that God required of you came into our family. And that's what happened a lot. God wants us to do this. God wants us to do that. And it came from that connection with the Christians. It came from that connection with the churches. And that has been the story of our lives up until quite recently, approximately a decade. And I was thinking about this idea around joy and peace and how do we create this healthy place to be for our children a joyful place a peaceful place so that we can be secure in the fact that our parents don't require us to be or say or do anything other than be and say and do the things that we want to do because we're free to be ourselves because that's the way god designed us we want that same relationship in our house as we have with our living god our daddy i know that there's some venom spitting christians that hate it when i call him when i call him daddy because they don't understand what that feels like to have a true and loving daddy that loves you no matter what. All they have is a death dealing system inside their death cult and their demon covered black hearts to spew venom out onto the world from. They are evil like their daddy but So how do we step outside of that evil system and bring peace into our families? Because most people who are on the way with God have come through some sort of Christianity. Like I say, now I've repented from my Christianity. I realized how evil it was. And now I just get to be myself with my daddy. And he loves me because of who I am. He designed me this way on purpose. So how do we bring that into the family? And if you don't have a family, how do you bring that into the relationships with people around you? I believe it starts with joy. How do we get joy? I started along this journey about a decade ago. 
joy is very, very powerful. Like I said, I like the, de the definition, glad to be with each other no matter what. And how do we bring that to our family? First of all, we have to be that intentionally looking for joy. And that means for me being thankful, just a few things each day, writing them down. I started writing them down. What am I thankful for? I'm thankful for a few things. And I share that with my daddy, with God. And then over time, slowly but surely, joy begins to be the place that I am naturally in rather than feeling down or angry or depressed or whatever it is that we're feeling. Joyful isn't a feeling, it's a state of being and you can choose to be in it. Fear is brought into the family by the women. That, that is just a natural way. And with women becoming more powerful and taking over families through feminism, fear is where all of us basically begin our lives now because there's not very many families with a joyful man at the head, not just a, a strong stoic man that rules his family with an iron fist. That isn't going to work. That's really bad. I've never experienced a family with a joyful man as the head because how do you even get back to joy? Nobody even knows our relationships. Our families have been stripped away from us for forever. A healthy family begins, begins with a joyful man. The joyful man, the husband has to be that way for a really long period of time. You can't just say I'm joyful now and everyone believes you. It doesn't work like that. You have to model that joy and what it's like to be joyful and be in a relationship with God. So your family can realize all the people around you can realize that you're a absolutely different person now. That's what it means to be changed by God. You can't just say I'm a Christian and then I'm, and I'm different. That's another one of those despicable Christian lies. If you have a joyful man, a joyful husband over a long period of time, then the wife can feel that joy, receive that joy, and then have a secure place to be. Then she can be at peace. Then she can spread peace throughout the family. And then you have a healthy family. And then you're not cursing your children with fear. This is what God told me today. I feel like that's extremely powerful. A joyful man creates a house of peace for his wife to be secure in, and then she can spread that peace through the family as you are together. That joy and that peace will spread and it will become who you are as a family. I have been on this journey for a long time, so I have noticed what happens when I intentionally strive to be joy with my daddy God. Now it's obvious what is happening. My family is more peaceful and happier. My wife can feel secure in me and in our God together. And then our family has become extremely peaceful because of that. At the beginning, I was cursing my family with these Christian rules of regulations, this legalism, this death cult. Because a lot of Christians, they like to coerce the people around them with fear. Oh, God won't like that. What if he, what if God's always looking? You don't want to do anything wrong. That's the way Christians work. Fear-based structure is run by Baal. The other gods are in control of Christianity and it has always been bad. They just say that it's good and they say that they're with God and with Jesus, but they're actually not at all. <laughs> they're death dealing hypocrites who spit venom everywhere. So God revealed this sort of really simple, but extremely difficult process. He revealed that to me today. I was in the shower actually. He's like, this is it. Cause I was thinking about this joy and peace. He said, a joyful father creates a peaceful home, a peaceful, safe place for his wife to be so that she can be herself and spread her peace and joy throughout the family. That is a healthy way for a husband and wife to live together. So I just thought I'd share that with you today. I don't want to do this video too long, but this is my understanding. I don't know shit. And I really do appreciate you guys watching. Hit the like button if you like it. Let's show these Christians that sometimes get onto these videos and they spew their hate. Let's show these evil Christians that there are some of us who are understanding what this journey feels like to be with God and who want to actually be with him and not just rest their whole life on a system of rules and regulations and legalism. I really appreciate it if you just hit the like button. Uh, it helps me out a lot. And comment. Even if you're one of those venom spewing Christians that hates me and wishes I was dead, please do. I really do appreciate the comments. Either way, it's fine with me. So yeah, thanks so much guys. I really appreciate you and I'll see you next time.